Thank you for choosing CTN. And now, it's time with Herman and Sharon. I love Everybody. you. We saw the whole thing in that. <laughs> she, she is still sweeping. <laughs> okay. What are you talking this is, about? This is, this is the back scenes of what happens in a television production. And if you saw what goes on behind the scenes, uh -huh. you would not believe it. Because mm -hmm. what we say to each other is not good. No, I'm just kidding. I'm just kidding. I'm just kidding. I don't know what's gotten into you this morning. By the way, you look hot. Don't. <laughs> Do not say that word. Why? Say you look nice. You look you hot. Know, not on television. No, okay. <laughs> Gary just popped out past the, past the camera. He agreed with me. <laughs> I'm telling you, he, he's, I don't know, you ate your Cheerios this morning or something. No, I didn't eat, no, I had my omelet. Cheese omelet. That's what uh -huh. I make early in the morning. Mm -hmm. We have the most unusual interview. I have never. Now, I, you can ask Linda. She's sitting in the studio. And if I lie, she'll come right up here and say you just <laughs> Yeah, lie. I'm sure no. she will. But, but I put no or yes on books because I have mm -hmm. hundreds of books. Mm -hmm. And I look through them, speed read, decide whether I want them or not. And many of them are no's, right, Linda? <laughs> she, 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 poor Linda, she has to, she has to say, you know, we need shows coming up, Herman. Uh, but anyway, so I, I read this one, and I'm going, you know what? I, I'll tell you why, because Faith, don't show her yet, Dave. Faith, Blanchford. Blatchford. 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 Blatch. Blatch. Blatchford. <laughs> From now on, that's the last time you'll hear Blatchford. I'm going to say Faith. Yeah. <laughs> okay. But anyway, anyway, I'm, I'm reading this, and the, the thing that impressed me, it has scripture all throughout. Well, if you back up what you're saying, and I can go, because I, I really check you out. I go to the scripture and read it. And I'm not kidding you. I, I, I actually did. Stay with me, Dave. Stay with me, Dave. <laughs> Directors always, what they get, they get uh -huh. antsy if they're on the same picture. Mm -hmm. too long. Mm -hmm. So then they'll start, you know, <laughs> shooting the lights or whatever. <laughs> so Dave doesn't do that. The reason I keep saying, stay with me, Dave. But I actually looked up Sharon and, and, and Faith motivated me. I looked up just a few. Mm -hmm. And Joel 2.28, Numbers 12.6, Acts 2.17, Proverbs 29.18, Daniel 2.19, Acts 16.9, Daniel 1.17, Isaiah, or, uh, yeah, Isaiah 4.1, Matthew 2.13, uh, Matthew 27.19, Job 33.15, Genesis 46.2. Uh, Are you going uh, through all of them? E Ecclesiastes 5.6, <laughs> yeah, honey, see, see what I mean? She's 57 years we've been married, so 58. 58, I'm sorry. Uh, Acts 18.9, Jeremiah 23.16, Genesis 15.1, uh, Matthew 1.20, uh, Isaiah 4.5, Habakkuk 2.2. 2. And I could go on twice this list mm -hmm. of passages in the Bible that talks about dreams. Mm -hmm. Well, I said, after going through all of the references and everything, I said, I've, I've got to have faith. So here's, uh, here's, you can shoot her now because, you know, I mean, not you literally. You can shoot her no, now. No, not literally. <laughs> <laughs> Please, there she no. Is. There she is. There she is. She's being shot right there. Uh, there's Faith. That last name that I just mentioned, uh -huh. I said it right when she taught me. Uh, uh, she's, uh, she has a ABA in religion from Vassar College. She, not only does she look smart, she is smart. Mm -hmm. She serves as an ordained pastoral counselor at Bethel Church in Redding, California, the land of the fruits and nuts. Mm -hmm. okay. And <laughs> she, she is also a regional uh, facilitator at large of the International Bethel Sozo Network. <laughs> I mean, this is a, I, I'm reading what it says, okay? Mm -hmm. Am I close? Uh, pretty. 
close. Pretty, pretty close. close. Yes, yes. No, See, you are. Very she'll, educated she'll people. Correct it very later. educated people don't want every phrase <laughs> that is correct. Uh, Faith spends half the year speaking at conferences, seminars around the world. So get her website if you want her. You have an opportunity. Uh, she also meets with leaders to provide personal counseling and creativity coaching. Wow. I mean. Can she do any more? And then, of all things, she takes out time to write this book. You'll see it on your screen there. Thanks, Dave. Boy, he's right on the ball today. <laughs> Winning the Battle for the Night. And you'll go to her website. You Oh, there it is. Faith Blatchford. <laughs> <laughs> com. Good job. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. I butchered it. I asked, her, I asked her in the green room, is your name butchered? Oh, she's probably... All the time. Yeah, it's, it's all kinds of ways of saying it, but, but this is fascinating mm -mm. and scriptural. So that's, that's what sells me on. And by the way, <clears throat> it, it's interesting. Uh, she wrote for her senior theses, The Challenge of 20th century divine healing at a secular college. Mm -hmm. With a Jewish thesis advisor. You got guts. Now, now that, that, that idea of healing, though, yes. came as a result of your father. Yes. Tell that story. My dad was brilliant. He was... Well, so you got his gene, didn't you? Yeah. Well, thank you. You did, you did. Uh, he was first, he started at Harvard and he left, and then he got an uh, appointment to the Naval Academy, wow. was a career naval officer, and then he decided to become a lawyer oh and went to law school. And then he decided, because he had a radical encounter with Jesus Christ, he decided to become an Episcopal priest. Now, and, normally Episcopals are kind of way out there in theology. Well, he, we were living in Houston, and yeah. the priest of the church was on fire for God. Wow. And my dad got saved. Now, that'll get your, especially if they think Episcopal, you know, we can oh, walk I, in there and just get stroked. Yeah. And all of a sudden, the gospel. Exactly. Yeah. And so, I mean, my dad's life was 180. My mother said, if you decide to become a doctor after this, I'm going to divorce you. I mean, she was kidding, but she wasn't an Episcopalian, yeah. Yeah. and she'd been through four careers. But so she was smart too. Yes, she was, mm -hmm. and so you, you did. You did not have a chance in life of being dumb. Yeah. Well, I have been blessed in wow. many ways. So my dad was ordained and had a parish, and then he got cancer of the vocal cords, which for a Minister is, can be the kiss of death. Yeah. And so we went to a healing service and because in the Episcopal liturgy, believe it or not, there is a healing service and the Holy Spirit is in the liturgy, although people don't know that or don't experience it. So wow. we went and wow. I went up and the priest came and said, what do you want? And I said, I want my dad to be healed. And so he laid hands on me. And that was my first encounter. The, with, so you experienced something, didn't you? I did. I didn't, I couldn't articulate. I couldn't yeah. put language to it. But from being very afraid, I was about eight. Suddenly, this presence, this peace. And I, you know, I didn't talk to my parents about it. I didn't know what had happened, but I knew something, and it was so powerful. Did you know your dad was healed? No, okay. and he went through the treatment, yeah. and but he lived a very long life. So what could have been the end was through God and through sure. radiation, absolutely. all of that. God, God, God made all uses, of that available. Yes, yeah. absolutely. But my life was changed. And so that started me on a journey of pursuing the presence of God and the Holy Spirit. Um, and I have been on that journey my whole life. And this book is part of that. You are uh, infectious with your personality. Well, hopefully that is the Holy Spirit because I think he is the one that is like a magnet and he has been a magnet in my life. And so I think we have an encounter 
so that we can be an encounter so that other people can have an encounter. Wow. That's my you What is your reason for that you felt you needed to write this book? Jealousy. Uh, jealousy. Believe it, not, believe it or not, wait till you hear this. So because I want all of God and wanted all of God, I didn't have uh, insomnia, which so many people do, and I have such compassion. Yeah. But I just was too excited. I had too much to do. And I would tell people, sleep is highly overrated. And I looked down on people who needed eight hours. I thought they were wimps. I thought sleep was for babies, and so grow up. And, uh, you know, very, very judgmental. But anyway, I had friends who had these incredible dreams from God, and I didn't. And I thought, some of these people, I've been a Christian longer. I have more knowledge of the Bible. And you were sleeping. So you had time to no, dream. No, I wasn't sleeping. No, she just said she wasn't. This is the oh, okay. problem. It was, it's, okay, gotcha. I had I you know, that. I four yeah. hours of sleep okay. or mm -hmm. le okay. five. Yeah. Well, successful people, you know, that's all they get. But I didn't realize that my lack of dreaming has anything to do with my lack of sleep. So I finally confessed to a friend who had these incredible dreams. And I said, you know, I'm jealous of you. And she looked at me and laughed, and I thought, you know, I'm sharing my heart, I'm being vulnerable, and She's you're like, laughing at me. Sure. Great friend you are. And so she looked at me, she said, Faith, you don't sleep enough to dream. Mm -hmm. And suddenly, wow. the connection between sleep and dreams, which I think, you know, we think, well, that's obvious. But it wasn't to me. And so that started me on a journey. I had to be convinced that wasting time sleeping was not a waste of time. Wow. Okay, d tell me now, because we only have a half hour. Yeah. How you could have me back and I, I, I could do part I, two. I know. <laughs> Linda, did you hear that? Because Linda loves you. So she said, you're going to love her as she came out of the green room. But, but how do you go from insomnia to I'm going to sleep? I think, I mean, there are practical ways, which I deal with in the book. There are things we can do. I mean, environment is one, uh, sleeping in a cold, dark room. Yeah. You have this all in the book, by the way. Mm -hmm. I so I it. won't go into that, yeah. but I think the other aspect, people with insomnia, sometimes it's chronic pain. And so we have to bring God into this equation right. of sleep whether it's insomnia or whether it's just wanting dreams or whether it's uh, needing to be more creative. We have to bring God in, because if you have chronic pain and you have insomnia, God can heal your body. So the hopelessness that goes with sleeplessness creates this vicious cycle, and we have to restore hope to people who have insomnia and whatever the cause. If it's emotional, I think 80% of the people who have insomnia suffer from anxiety. Sure. And some of them can't turn the motor off. Mm -hmm. Exactly. Yeah. Which is where we have to bring God into mm -hmm. the mix. It's worry that goes over and over yeah. and over in your head. Yes. You say dreams are part of normal Christian life. They're meant to be. Okay. Because of time. Yes. You then started dreaming? I started revamping my preparation for sleep and the amount of time that I sleep to give God his seven or eight hours. You know, the day begins at night in yes. Genesis. Yes. Yes. And we've got it all backwards. We think our day begins in the morning. But God intended that the first eight hours, that he would have our undivided attention and that he would be able to restore our body, equip it for the day, deal with any issues that are going on, and this is the most important part, download the solutions, the wisdom. You know, the world is running out of solutions to problems. And when you think of the dream, that Joseph was able to interpret for the Pharaoh, Nebuchadnezzar, whatever you want to call him, 
he was given a 15-year economic recovery plan, 14-year wow. recovery plan that saved several nations. Yes. That was all by way of a dream. Yes. That is why God needs us to be connected. Because during the day, I mean, we're busy. Who has time to be getting these downloads? Okay, Faith, let's get it to the bottom line. Yes. Okay, you, ha you had to start dreaming, right? Yes. Okay. Then, because, believe it or not, I will lay my head on the pillow after, after mm -hmm. all my devotions, takes mm -hmm. a while, mm -hmm. and all my prayers, mm -hmm. and I'll climb into bed. And I will, and I mean, I mean, I say this often, mm -hmm. Lord, I want to use this time to just think about you during my dreams. Just mm -hmm. think about you. Mm -hmm. I just, I just want, and then I'll start quoting verses, mm -hmm. okay, mm -hmm. to kind of, mm -hmm. and then I'll go off to sleep. Mm -hmm. I will have the weirdest dreams. I mean, like, I'm always, I mean, the place is flooded and I'm trying to get my car. I mean, it's, <laughs> it doesn't have anything to do with spirituality. Mm -hmm. Okay, how did you go into dreams that you talk about writing them down and there's a meaning mm -hmm. how do you interpret that well without you know getting into interpreting your I know, dreams. i'm gonna have you back by the way so just <laughs> say whatever you want to say but those there are things sometimes that are unresolved in our subconscious that are being processed at night that may be God, may not be God. It can just be cares, worry, anxiety, how is this going to happen? Or it can be from God. But this is where communication, I think there's so many believers who don't understand that if God gives the dream, he's going to give the interpretation. And we just need to get quiet. So my, my God hasn't given me what, I, what the problems I have, right? Because I, I have yet to get a God's dream. Well, you don't know for sure. And the other aspect of that is it's not necessarily just dreams that God gives us in the night. It is, and that's why the title of the book is God's Plan for Sleep, Dreams, and Revelation. Okay. So the enemy wants to focus always on what we don't have. So if you don't have God dreams that you can identify, then he's saying, see Herman, you don't have dream, and you do all these things. Well, after reading your book, I go, you see, Herman, you don't have <laughs> yes, whatever, whatever you need. But there's revelation. And I, even to this day, I don't have lots of God dreams. I have a few now and then, which are significant. But what I have discovered is this incredible flood of revelation that I'll get up in the morning and uh, I use Evernote and I just get into Evernote and suddenly I've got a whole book outline. I've got a whole message. I've got a whole marketing idea for something. I mean, just that I haven't studied, I haven't read. And I also, I, I record myself anytime I speak because generally I'm going to say something that I've never thought of. I'd never read. I'd never heard. And I think, okay, God, you dropped that into my spirit while I was sleeping. And so I tell people, I record myself, not because I'm vain. Do well, you think some of it too, though, is the fact that you're finally getting enough sleep mm -hmm. to be, to, to feel, uh, to get these thoughts and oh, absolutely. these ideas? Because I didn't have it before. I mean, I had some yeah. revelation. Yeah. But now it is like I wake up and sometimes I mean, I'll be in the shower and I think I got to have a recorder that I can have in the shower because it's wow. like this, whoa, this flow. So Okay, is it, let me use this analogy. Okay. S singers get up and sing. Yes. And, and, and they'll come back and sit mm -hmm. down so when, when I have them on the show and I'll go, mm -hmm. man, that is unbelievable. Mm -hmm. What does it feel like to have that? And they'll say, many, even artists say, mm -hmm. well, you could do that. Mm -hmm. No, mm -hmm. no. Mm -hmm. Is what you're doing, this is exclusive for faith? No. And you think I can have it? You can have it. And see, the thing is, you probably already do. But because we... A guy as old as I am, you'd think I'd have it, wouldn't you? Well, I don't think you'd be doing what you're doing for as long as you've been doing it if God hadn't been imparting to you in your body, your mind, and also your spirit. But see, God is not arrogant. He doesn't need 
to say, hey, Erwin, I gave that to you. He's, he's <laughs> very <laughs> humble. In fact, on that same like subject, that. on that same subject, she says in her book, page 35, humility is often the step before revelation. Yes, and, and God is, he doesn't need credit. And so he doesn't say, Faith, I just gave you that. He is hoping that I'm going to say, God, that had to be you. Wow. And that I begin to recognize God's activity in my life and your joy and your, you know, quips and everything. I mean, I'm sure you're, you have a sense of humor, but I bet God gives you this quickness that you just have these well, I make, answers. I, I guarantee I make God laugh. Well, yeah, but he, he makes you laugh. Yeah. Yeah. And it, but it's those downloads that you get um, at night. So I think the enemy is always wanting to say what we don't Did have. Did you dream last night? No, I didn't. Okay. So it's not like... Every night. Okay. No. But I'm sure because God is God and he has so much to impart to us that I know it says he daily loads us with benefits. Well, since my night, my day begins at night, I got the download last night. I love that comment. My day begins at night. Yes. And I have that expectation. You say the purpose of God's interaction with his children at night to prepare them for the day. Yes. Mm-hmm. Physically, I mean, this is where scientific research and medicine is always revealing to us the, the miracle and wisdom of God. When you do research on how the body is wired, there's the circadian clock, which has to do with this internal clock that every person, no matter what culture, has. And it is a sleep and awakeness clock. Mm -hmm. Our eyes notice when it gets dark, send a message to our brain, to the hypothalamus in our brain that says it's time to sleep. And so the hypothalamus then sends a message to the body to release melatonin, which causes sleepiness. Now, that was God's design for us to sleep. It goes down to the cellular level. And so the work that's done in our body as we sleep, the work that's done in our emotions and in our spirit, it is, it is absolutely mind boggling. You know, you, sitting here today on this live program, you taught me something. What's that? What I'm not doing when I get these ideas is saying it's from God. Yes. Mm -hmm. Because many of my programs have resulted from me getting up from sleep and going, I've got a picture of what that program should look like. Yes. That's that was it. God. Yes, absolutely. See, that, that's, what, that's what I'm not doing. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Why am I not doing that? I do, think, I, do I want the credit? No, I think it's, and this is the sad thing, and within the church is there has been almost no teaching on sleep. I ask people, have you ever heard a sermon on sleep? Never. Mm -hmm. Then there has been lack of teaching on wow. dreams and revelation and the night or wrong teaching. And so when you have no teaching on something, how do you know how to do it? I'm going to, I'm going to give you the next four and a half minutes to teach. Mm -hmm. And you talk about this one thing, and I'm going to give this as, as kind of your catalyst. Okay. Wooing dreams. You have that in the book. Mm -hmm. Wooing dreams. That's your camera. Yes. You don't have to look at me anymore at all. Okay. Just look right there. <laughs> They're watching you. Okay. Share your heart, and then we'll go out with your teaching. Okay. So wooing dreams, I think so many people don't realize that God is a loving father. Yeah. You know, we are a, an earth that's filled with orphans. And the purpose of Jesus Christ dying and the shed blood of Jesus Christ, it wasn't just about our sins. That was the obstacle and the father wants his kids back. 
So he is wooing us. You know, in Zephaniah, it talks about the fact that God sings over us. And if you have, very few people have good uh, experiences. I don't ever remember my father singing over me, singing a lullaby. But our Father in heaven wants to sing over us, to woo us into this relationship with a loving, caring, providing Father. And so it's, all, it's just a matter of saying, Father, sing over me. Wow. When you go to bed tonight, go to bed hugging God and saying, Father, sing your new song over me. He's got a song just for you wow. every night. And He's if you, waiting to sing. And if you read the Psalms, right? Mm -hmm. Exactly, exactly. It's the, the expression of God's heart as a father pities his children. So the Lord pities us. Wow. He knows we're dust. But David encountered this. You know, David was one of the greatest songwriters, but he got songs in the night from his father. And they were love songs, and they were warring songs, and they were songs of instruction. Wow. So who knows? You may have the next best uh, top 10 song, <laughs> but it doesn't matter because having God sing over us and woo us with his love is transforming, it's healing. It will bring healing to your mind, your body, your emotions. She has a chapter, many chapters, there's 14 chapters, but one of her chapters is teach children to say bye-bye boogeyman. Yes. Quickly, we have about, for about a minute and a half, what does that mean? That means some people use scare tactics to discipline their children. They say, you better go to bed or the boogeyman will get you. And so we try and control children through fear rather than teaching children how to control fear and the boogeyman with the authority that they have. Mm -hmm. I will not be robbed. Wow. Mm -hmm. And so teaching children, you know, if your child says there's a monster in the closet, they're seeing it. You may not. Wow. And you just tell them to say, monster, get out of here in Jesus' name. Wow. Mm -hmm. I'm telling you, she talks about Abraham Lincoln had a dream. Solid. She's got, she got the whole story in the book about what happened, and he shared it. And his assassination, he already had a dream about it. He knew it was, I mean, it's like, you mean he wow. knew it was going to happen? Well, mm -hmm. I'm sure when that bullet went through his brain, it wasn't a surprise. But in a, you, you get, get this, I'm going to have her back. <laughs> We're going to spend more. You hear that, Linda? She, <laughs> she, is, she is so fascinating, mm -hmm. and the book is even just like her. You'd think she wrote this. <laughs> That's right, she did. Get your copy. Mm -hmm. God bless. Bye-bye. Thank you for watching It's Time. If you have recently made a decision for Christ, Herman and Sharon would like to hear from you.